Hey there guys, welcome back, Ricky here. All right, so I've just finished sharpening my knives and they're, uh, I've got a lot of good things to say about both of these stones. And I'm just gonna hop right into it and uh, let's go with my left here. So the Rika 5000, now this stone has always been, or at least in the last four months of me using it, it's really been my favorite sharpening stone or polishing stone, mainly because of its responsiveness, uh, positive feedback, speed of cut which I really didn't realize how fast it cut until today and on the first uh, on the first side this knife developed a burr in only three passes on the first side and on the second side it developed a burr in two passes now if you guys saw the Chosera polishing video it achieved the exact same speed as the Chosera that's very surprising to me okay now, we're not going to jump ahead and compare them two just yet, but uh, these two will probably at some point go head to head for maybe the top spot of the best sharpening whetstone or polishing whetstone. But we're not going to jump ahead yet. In terms of the finish, you're not going to get that mirror that mirror finish. I think the finish on this knife is a it's a very nice very nice uh, polish. Uh, not the mirror fin the finish on this knife is a very nice polish. I think it to me, I actually like the satin look better than that mirror polish, uh, mainly because I think it looks it looks like it's a sharper knife, and uh, it's not so shiny. Okay, I don't like things that are too shiny, but that's a very personal thing. Maybe you guys like it. Um, in terms of in terms of the way the you know the knife feels on the stone, it really feels a lot like a Chosera. I hate to keep using the Chosera name. But in terms of how well it cuts and how good the knife feels on it, it's very reminiscent of the Trocera. Uh, and it's, you know, in terms of speed, it's right up there. You're getting three passes on the first side, two passes on the second side. Loading up, it doesn't really load up that much. Um, it lo the King loads up a little less. And, you know, again, the load up is not a big issue when you have a knife, uh, when you have a stone that sharpens this quickly. And again, uh, you know, these are also very extreme conditions where I'm blunting the knives on a brick. If you were to sharpen your knife after, uh, you know, use this stone after a sharpening stone, you probably won't see this load up at all. I've actually never seen the stone load up until today. And that's because I actually sharpened the knife from a blunt, very blunt state of uh, having 20 strokes on a brick. So this is the first time I've actually seen load up in this, on this stone. You probably won't experience that unless you do what I do and uh, artificially blunt your knives. But very good feeling stone. Tactile feedback is excellent. Hand feel, amazing. Okay, I have nothing bad to say about this stone. It's a very, very good feeling stone. Uh, very positive feedback, very snappy. Okay, so very rare for a polishing stone to have a snappy feel to it. And this and the Chosera so far on the, are the two stones that I really feel like they have a nice snap to them. And something that you have to experience for yourself very good feeling stone, definitely something that you should consider if you're in the market for a polishing stone. The King 6000, okay, so again, very good stone, uh, very much muted in terms of feel, of hand feel, okay? If you're not used to having a polishing stone, you're, if you've really never used a polishing stone, this stone will feel very, very muted. Um, it gives you a really nice polish, okay? The polish in this knife is very close to mirror-like, uh, very close to mirror like and probably the the easiest way to conceptualize how this look which I'll show you at the end of the video this uh, edge right now looks like what Japanese knives or a lot of Japanese knives will look like when they come from the factory okay that really sh nice sheen on the on the your tip of your blade so if you like that the king will give you that in addition to a few other ones too but we're talking about the king right now so speed of cut, this is a much slower uh, cutting stone than the Rika 5000. The first uh, side, it took me five passes to develop a burr, and then on the second side, I believe it took me four passes. So just much slower, okay? Now it's not really a big problem when each pass only takes you a minute or so, or two minutes at the most, but definitely something that you should know about. Uh, tactile feedback, again, it's a little muted, so you you feel the stone is you can definitely tell that this stone is actually quite soft relative to the Rika 5000 not so much that it's soft and dead uh, it's just it is softer 
you definitely can feel that it is a little bit more dampened feeling as well so more muted more dampened you don't hear the stone very silent stone if you guys go back and watch the sharpening portion of this of this uh episode you can i mean i can hardly hear the stone as i'm you know standing right on top of it so i don't think the mic can even pick the stone up so that's also very nice it's very nice quality if you guys wanted a stone that's very quiet and silent this stone definitely will give you that uh the rika you much more aggressive cutting you definitely feel and hear the stone so uh, not a negative thing at all. Just you do know that you are sharpening and uh, the stone is taking off a lot of material Or a lot more material than a typical polishing stone and uh, As you guys can see in the sharpening portion. There's a lot of a lot of um, A lot of buildup on the stone when you're sharpening it But as soon as you rub it off it comes right off and you see a lot of material come off of the stone as well on the king There's a lot less that comes off. Okay per pass. So again Good thing, because the stone will not load up. The performance will not be hindered uh, as the time as the time goes as time goes on. But as long as you have a good Nagara stone, it'll clean the stone right up. Uh, so this stone again, you're not going to have that issue if you have a Nagara stone, or if you don't blunt your knives on a brick, you won't have this load up issue either. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to do a cut test because, as you guys know, all these knives are extremely sharp at this point. All these stones will give you really good. Uh, really really good edges as long as you guys know what you're doing and i'm really just here i'll show you the the scratch pattern at the end of the video and i'm really here to really just report to you guys how they feel and that's really the more important thing and now for a winner and here's a really hard part for uh for me is i both i like both of these stones very much so and they both offer very different qualities which i enjoy really all of them but uh, I have to pick a winner, and the winner for me, and I'll pick a winner and I'll tell you why. And for me, the winner is the Eureka 5000. Okay, this guy here. Mainly, uh, two things. Obviously, the speed of cut is one of them, but the thing is, the tactile feedback is just incredible on this stone. Uh, it doesn't feel like a polishing stone. That's a strange thing. It feels more like a sharpening stone with a very fine edge to it, okay? And so that's what I that's why I like it so much is it's it's very very positive in terms of feedback very aggressive okay but not hard not extremely hard like a Shapton and not not too soft like the the king I feel like the king is a little too soft for my taste but again I'm not looking for that very high sheen uh, of a of a finish so for me this stone really offers a really good combination of speed tactile feedback hand feel and that satin finish that I like a lot or as some people like to call it the Kasumi finish uh, I don't know Japanese knife terms very much so I'm not gonna pretend like I do and throw these all these terms and names out okay I am a amateur when it comes to knives and Japanese knives in general so so yeah I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend that I'm a knife expert because I am NOT I'm learning as I go and uh, hopefully you guys appreciate that but yeah so this stone here for me is the better stone they cost really much the same this stone is a uh, I think retails for $60 50 uh, 57 or $60 this guy retails for 60 bucks and um, I just I like the white surface the white real estate definitely helps but and if you know all, all things being equal if it was just if they were both the exact same size same dollar amount um, I would still go for the Rika 5000 because it feels better, it feels more aggressive, uh, better for positive feedback, which I, I enjoy. Okay, so again, nothing really negative about the King 6000. It's just a little bit slower, and for me, the dampened feel was something that I didn't fully, thoroughly enjoy over the more aggressive feel of the Rika 5000. But again, if you have the stone, or this is a stone that you are considering. Go get it. It's a very good stone. You will not be disappointed with the uh, with the King 6000 either the S1 model or S2, S3 or the KDS model. You'll you'll enjoy the stone very much so. Okay? Um so that's it for this episode. I will do a quick um close up of the knives for you. So stick around, see that. And uh that's it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Okay, guys. This is the polish or the mirror uh, scratch pattern of the Rika 5000 as you guys can see it's got a very 
very nice satin finish and uh, very professional look I like this look very much so the mirror, mirror polishes are nice but I like my knives a little bit uh, sleeker looking a little maybe sharper looking but very nice very nice finish Here's the left side. Okay, so here is the King 6000, and as you can see, it's a much, much glossier look, very much close to mirror polish. very fine scratch pattern very nice glossy look Hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.